uh, Michael Safioti, and I hope that's how you pronounce it, of Snohomish County, Washington, was um, busted for a minor misdemeanor possession of marijuana. Uh, this was before, very briefly, like a couple months before they they um, legalized marijuana in Washington, and he missed his court date for that misdemeanor pot possession charge. But he went to police and surrendered himself, um, but he was immediately jailed anyway. The following morning, in, in jail at breakfast, he was seen on video talking to a guard. Presumably he was asking about milk ingredients in the food he was about to eat because he has a severe milk allergy. Moments later, he was seen sitting down, eating a few bites of oatmeal. Um, a few moments later, he ran over to the guard's desk and was seen using his inhaler. He asked, presumably, he asked to see a nurse, but he was ignored and sent to his jail cell instead. He pressed the call button, but was ignored. Allegedly, guards said he was faking. Thirty-five minutes after he took those few bites of food, he was unconscious in his cell. Nurses finally were called and they performed CPR on him. He was rushed to the hospital, but he was he was pronounced dead about a half an hour later. County official, on top of that, on top of the tragic death of this man who was arrested on a minor pot offense, county officials have also tried to cover up this story by first by stonewalling his mother's attempts to obtain video footage of the moments preceding her son's death. First by denying its existence completely and then finally when they were caught with that lie they, they turned in only unincriminating edited footage of, of the videos. Also, and, and when they were finally forced to hand over the full video they still have um, barred her attorneys so far from interviewing jail staff or um, responding medical personnel who responded to who responded who came to the scene so this is and and on top of all that this is the eighth death in that Snohomish jail Snohomish County Jail in the past three years a lot of it is uh, uh, attributed to the understaffed and overcrowded conditions of the jail but of course um, the, her, his mother's attorney and uh, uh, human, human welfare groups are saying this is not just about being understaffed and underfunded. This is about the dehumanization of the prisoners in our system as well as um, the failure of the drug war as a whole. His mom's, and, and his mom says that he only smoked pot to relieve his severe anxiety which was greatly due to the fact that he had such a severe allergy to milk that it was something that he had to deal with every day of his life and worry about every moment and he suffered from severe anxiety and smoked pot to try to relieve it. Four months later after this incident pot was legalized in Washington State. So, thoughts? That, I mean, right there, that is, that's horrible. Okay, just the dehumanization, horrible, right? The fact that he, that they didn't even go and check on him when he said he had a milk allergy, right? They didn't check on him. They thought he mm -hmm. was making it. The, the, whole, the whole story sounds incredibly disastrous, and, and I want to know if people got in trouble for this. The biggest question I have is, was this a for-profit prison? Uh or the, you know, we've built this system in this country where instead of rehabilitation for drug addicts, we get them into the system of, you know, prison, and this is what happens, you know. I mean, situations like this happen. We need a paradigm shift in the way that we deal with drug addiction and drug users. This guy was smoking marijuana. That is, he should not have been in prison, first of all. Second of all, what is going on in this prison where they've had eight deaths right. in the past three years, like... What's going on there? Uh, I suspect that there's some sort of contract to get people coming in and out of that prison. But yeah, uh, if, you, 
if you can remember, Reed, we actually did a story on, it, it's sort of a different, what, the Texas prison that allowed people to sit in 120 degree weather yes. during, you know, during the summer, not get out of their cells, and they've had, what, four or five heat deaths, 12 heat mm-hmm. deaths? I don't quite remember the number, but there was... A I think it was 12, but yes, 12, 12 something deaths like that. from heat-related illness in this prison. Amazing. Yes, this is becoming a trend. This is becoming a trend in this country, uh, an epidemic of, of treating our prisoners like they're not even human anymore, like because they did whatever they are presumed to have done, they are not even deserving of the basic respect given to that should be given to any living creature um, and and just you know they're presumed to be faking their complaints are presumed to be meaningless and and just noise but when there's something serious like this y- you have no you have no sense of discerning in in the system in the prison system among the prison guards and uh, it's like they have no sense of in, of there's no sense compassion, of worth. like they com- they don't empathy. see people as being worth anything mhm and like you said it was the dehumanization of prisoners well obviously you did something terrible to be in here and the only thing that he did was smoke a plant right and he shouldn't even be in jail for that in the first place and the right. horrible, the horrible irony that you know, four months later, pot was legalized in the state, and that should make us really reflect. It's like, what are we doing as a country? What are we doing? The, uh, if you know, people people should not be in prison for nonviolent drug offenses at all, uh, and and pot should barely even be considered a drug, and shouldn't be considered, you know, a. a uh, substance for addiction and substances that are addictive that are serious substances like heroin and cocaine they should be treated like medical conditions not criminal criminal issues and they shouldn't be locked up with violent offenders but well in this country most of our prisoners are nonviolent drug offenders there's been proof Portugal decriminalized drugs all of them right decriminalized drugs Made them legal, and they saw their 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 addiction rates drop. Mm-hmm. They saw their addiction rates drop, and they they spent so so little on enforcement after that point that they took all that money that they would have spent on drug enforcement and incarceration and all that, and they put it towards drug treat, treatment programs and hospitals. And they can also take that saved police effort and energy and those police who would otherwise be focusing their energy on drug offenses can be focusing their energy on actual you know thefts and and rapes and assaults and murders and actual violent crimes I I, I don't even think there should be such a thing as victimless crimes um, it, it doesn't even make any sense. It's pretty much an oxymoron, in my opinion. You know, while I was reading this story, I couldn't help but think about Google Glass and thinking about how great it's going to be in a world where we have uh, video cameras on us at all times and we can hold all of these people accountable, uh, you know, when we own the video of what exactly happened to us <laughs> and not the, not the jail owning the video. Right, exactly. I, I, I wanted to know exactly why no one seemed to get in trouble at all for lying in the first place about there being no video footage and then trying to get away with giving little snippets and, and edited video. You know, it's funny. I, I, when you made that point, Aaron, I got a little cynical. And I was like, whoa, Google Glass, huh? The NSA is going to hack into that. I'm going to watch everything that you do. From your viewpoint, talk yeah, about, I mean, every, everything has an upside and a downside, right? Uh, For sure. <laughs> yeah. So I just had I had to throw in my my kind of weird uh, paranoid two cents on that one, but other than that, no, I I think it would be great. I mean, yeah, holding people accountable for the bullshit that they do, the the stuff that's wrong. I'm absolutely all in favor of that. Like, 
if there was a law, and I'm sure there are in, in proposed laws in different places. I think what was it? New York was the last one where police were be forced to wear cameras upon them. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, I would be in favor of something like that because that's a good way to hold them accountable. And but of course, the counter argument to that is, well, police already have cameras on their cars and they still do stupid crap. <laughs> but at least you can hold them more accountable for that. Well, I mean, look at that story of that um, that the Young Turks did about a month ago, where the guy was got his motorcycle jacked, and uh, and the assailant was shot by that police officer. That's an example of a private citizen having a camera on him, recording exactly what happened. And uh, I think in this situation, their family wishes they had that video, right? Footage, you know. And there's no reason that they shouldn't get that video. You know, I I, I don't see why like. I don't see how they can keep that from her. Right. She should have a right to that video. Yeah. It, it's her son, after all. This this is just, you know, it's such a tragic story, you mm. know, of, of, a, of a lost, another lost life, another ruined life, and this mother, her his mother's life is forever ruined because a mother never gets over the loss of a child. It's just, it's disgusting, and it's so disturbing, all because... He wanted to smoke a dried plant to help his anxiety. Right, and you know it's a lot better than a lot of the anxiety meds out there already. Of course. Of course the pharmaceutical companies they don't make any money off that. Why? Why, why does it? Why does it always seem that everything goes back to the money? Mm -hmm. It does always go back to the money. Somebody's got to make money off this. Somebody makes money off incarcerating this poor guy. Somebody makes money off the medication that he would have gotten if he wasn't smoking that marijuana. Somebody mm -hmm. makes money off the, the, the enforcement of these drug laws. There's always somebody making money off someone else's misfortune, and that is sort of the bad thing, the, 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 the very thing that's wrong with America today. Wow. Any final thoughts? Actually, I do have one more final thought. I just Go wanted ahead. to mention how sad it is, too, that the United States jails more than... We're number one at jailing more people than anyone else on the earth. Yes, As yes James we are. As would say, I will, I will quote him on this one, we're number one. And we have 25% of the world's prison population. Way to go, America. Yeah. Way to go. Are you happy? Are you proud? Is this the land of the free? Is this truly the land of the free? It, it is not. We are right. the land of fail. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Please leave a comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button and share with your friends. If you want to see more, go to our channel at youtube.com slash tytnation. And if you really want to support the show, support this channel, go to our fundraising campaign at www.patreon.com slash tytnation. The website is in the description below. Thank you guys and keep watching.